What's up, you guys? Welcome back from a quite a while detour and I guess leave of absence. But I'm back posting videos again. We got a lot of content for you. So, guys, make sure to watch this video until the end. The topic of today is the worst credit repair companies. And behind me on this whiteboard that I filled out, I've carefully filled out with a lot of the information that's just not being put on YouTube that needs to be uploaded to YouTube for you to watch. Why you? Because you're either in four categories. You're either researching to fix your credit yourself. This is valuable to you. You're either researching to hire a legitimate credit repair company um, and you want to do the due diligence on finding the worst credit repair companies first before you hire a legitimate credit repair company or a, the best credit repair company or a credit repair company that can repair your credit fast, that's for you, or you're an existing client of mine, this is still valuable to you. So I think that's about three categories. The next one, maybe, oh, the last one, very important one, a hater. You're either a hater or a stalker that's covertly watching my channel to just talk crap and advertise me for free. So I appreciate you too, because your stomach will churn, uh, during the whole duration of this video and you will become sick and you will lose sleep at night and you will continue to propagate and advertise my business for freely, which I so do appreciate. And we will go into that in a little bit later, but let's talk about what we have here. So when you Google the worst credit repair companies, what pops up? I'll tell you what pops up this article, this article right here. And it's funny. It's really interesting what this article says about certain businesses that are in credit repair. You guys need to know, you guys need to know about this information. There's criteria for good credit repair companies and the worst credit repair companies. So if you want to know how to increase your credit score quickly, then you first need to be able to understand and identify the disqualifiers of the best credit repair companies and the qualifiers for the worst credit repair companies. This, it's this distinction that will be able to create this polarity between the two so you can be able to avoid the worst credit repair companies and choose the best credit repair companies or at least not the worst. If you're not going to hire the worst credit repair companies, then that already you already won half of the battle. So I'm going to give you all of the criteria on how to identify credit repair scams and just shady business practices and companies that you do not want to hire. And when I say you do not want to hire, we have recent case studies of certain credit repair companies that are operating illegal and doing shady business practices. Okay. This video was long overdue and it was originally posted about a specific credit repair scam that is doing credit repair illegally in the state of Georgia. And uh, their name is on here. It's actually on the top of the list. And I'm not the only one that agrees. So uh, guys, I want you to watch this video because there is a video about this business taken down, but it deserves to be on YouTube because it's my duty to inform people. I don't want people to be misled. And it kind of bothers me. Uh, whether you sign up with Pinnacle Credit Repair, which is actually the fastest credit repair company around, if you Google the fastest credit repair company around, you're going to find Pinnacle up there on the first page of Google. There's a reason for that. And that just didn't happen last night. That just didn't happen last week. Try 10 years, it's been that way. The video that I posted before got taken down. And it's funny because the guy that it was flagged for privacy rights. So let me just give you some background on this specific person that flagged the content and it got uh, taken off. I know specifically why, because they were afraid of their address. So this guy is uh, doing illegal credit repair in the state of Georgia and he's operating there. He posts videos and content there and it's actually legal to do so. You cannot in any way, shape or form indirectly or directly market, solicit or even provide credit repair solutions to people and charging them. This guy likes to do these legal loopholes and, and whatnot. When I first posted this video to expose him, he posted several videos to apologize and I quote him, oh, forgive me, I'm new at this. I remember the, I remember the video my friend showed me. 
uh, he was sweating bullets and he's like, oh, I'm new at this and the credit repairs in Tennessee. And so he went to ten he, he went and did some stuff online with Tennessee, with uh, their state. And he still hasn't even got a Tennessee business. And then he went to Texas and changed his, uh, actually on his website, this is a fact, he changed his company's address on the website three different times. And I have the screenshots and the timestamps and the videos to prove that. I, I'm not going to upload them here because uh, that's precisely the reason why he is able to get these videos removed because he'll make a claim and said, oh, this is my private address. First of all, it's not private, okay? If you've listed on a website, if you list it online. So this guy is so uh, stupid that he took his professional business and put his home address, which you can find in the link description below. So in the, in the link description below, there are links to back up everything that I'm talking about. Now we're going a little bit about this credit repair scam that's doing credit repair illegally in the state of Georgia. You can just Google this right now. Is credit repair illegal in Georgia? You can YouTube it. Cre is credit repair illegal in Georgia? And you will find the truth about it. You will find other people that are scams trying to defend this, but no, credit repair is illegal in Georgia. You cannot do it. You can't set up a business somewhere else and live there and do the letters and all that stuff. There, that's still illegal. So make sure to not do business with credit repair scams like that. Now it's funny because um, this person always copies my content, like from the beginning, copies and copies my content. And you could see right here, here's some of the opinions about people, right? You see this lady right here? She said, he's trying to be you. And then Rico says that he, he doesn't even have his business set up. Now keep in mind, these are people that have already paid me thousands of dollars and they've worked with me and there's no scam here. So Rico is one client where we posted a couple of videos of his success and I kid you not, this guy and his minions, because he has minions that harass us and spam us, spam the comment section with threats, and they harass our employees and staff. There's videos about that. This person actually threatened my employee and uh, said he's going to blackmail him and all this other stuff. And then he tried to reach out to that same employee and then use his testimony against me, but he found out quickly that you can't turn people against each other, right? And that's exactly what this guy's trying to do. He reaches out to my clients, which is very unprofessional. Imagine a business owner reaching out to another person's clients and then trying to get them to, to say some bad things about it. That's just immature. Okay. So this guy was saying that this guy's testimony was a scam and you could see it right here. It's not, I'll show you a video. I'll show you a, uh, boom. You could see Right there, Rico, hope you guys can see it. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you do. That's a screenshot of his Credit Karma. You can see it right there. Look, that scores in the 700s already, all right? So if I was a scam and that was a fake client, then how is he able to produce these things, okay? And he says right here, TransUnion is getting there. Okay, that's Rico. He's a real customer, Ricardo Unzueta. He's from Las Vegas. He's my client. There's no need to fake things. I don't fake things. I can produce text messages like this in the thousands. Okay, that's how much business I've done. This person, uh, when he posts content, it's screenshots of unverifiable stuff. So keep in mind, this is another red flag. If any credit repair company shows you a screenshot of, and it says deleted, deleted, Unless you see a before and after, you need to see a before and a after, then it could be verified, okay? There's something called admissibility and inadmissibility in the court of law. Text messages don't constitute as admissible in many ways, but in this situation, they do because you can actually see this as a person, this is see there's a, that's, a, that's their phone number, and you can see this is a screenshot from their credit karma, and I've actually logged in their credit karma he's actually logged into an experience and there's videos to back this up and i may post a video to show you again just to give you that extra layer of uh, security and insurance that all of these testimonies are 100 percent real and my clients love me so much that i can actually post a video about them and show you their results there's nothing to hide here when a company says they're transparent believe me pinnacle is transparent all right so that's one 
Then number two, let's look at Brandon. Brandon's a recent client. Brandon paid me $3,000 recently. Imagine that a, a customer paying me $3,000 and is gonna, probably going to pay me more because we're actually doing some other extra layer of service. People are not going to pay a premium for scams, especially intelligent people. This guy's a business owner and other of my clients are business owners. Some of my clients are federal government employees. They're not, they're not, they're not dumb. Okay. So let's look here, scroll up. Let me see. Oh, right here. So there's um, this guy that I'm that I'm talking about. The name is on here, and he sends people to leave fake reviews on my business. Imagine if you're a business owner and someone is actually so harnessed with hate and jealousy that they actually leave you negative reviews when they're not even a client. This person did the same, and look at what happened. This guy read that review. Okay, you can see right here. Let me read it out for you. He says, intelligent, intelligent individuals who have some type of emotional intelligence would probably be able to read between the lines and question the validity of this post. Exactly. That's, that's true. We're all adults here. Okay. This individual isn't your client. Why is he making up a lie and attempt to tarnish your brand and name? I think examples like this is pretty disgusting. But you're right. I keep forgetting there's a lot of people who struggle with extreme mental health issues. This would definitely cons be considered liable. I hope you don't have to deal with this often. This is insane. And then he says, uh, he's repeating the same thing over and over again, but not saying what actually happened. <laughs> you know, the order of events doesn't make sense. Exactly. So you're going to find that these guys have a habit of conjuring up these lies and stories by taking up fundamental information, okay? Fundamentalists, it's a literary term where people take English words and they mix them together and think it actually makes a word. No, that's not necessarily true because words in the English language are predicated upon our history and cultural changes because you have to understand English is a hybrid language. Did you know that? Yeah, English, modern day English has evolved uh, in a conjunction between even Aramic, Arabic, yeah, Arabic, because during the, uh, the, what is it called? I forgot the days where Arabic conquered Spain, they mixed their language, and then Latin, Latin America, there's a lot of Latin words in America, German words, okay? You'll find that English words are similar to German because that influx of cultural difference, uh, cultural mixing. Okay, another thing is uh, Greek. Greek is infused within English, like meta. Meta is a Greek word, okay? Psyche, psyche, that's a Greek word. So the whole Western world is kind of infused together, right? Uh, and English is a multitude of languages. That's why you have Old English and then Modern Day English, where Modern Day English is not a, an official term, but it's, it's true. It's a real thing. You can see it. If you, if you went to science, like this guy clearly never passed a science or English class because he, he absolutely knows nobody's talking about. This guy's so dumb, he can't even write an essay without, without lying. This guy's so stupid that he creates lies that aren't backed upon anything. So these guys like to make these stories that just don't add up, okay? You can, you can put stuff, stuff together, but it doesn't make sense. Okay, like for instance, I'll give you one. He says, Rico is a fake review. He says, you notice Rico is saying this is not, a, if you look at the video, I'll leave a video with Rico's video in it. I hope you uh, guys check it out. And this guy is saying, this guy is a liar because anyone that says this is not a paid review, it would mean the total opposite. No, that's if they're a liar. Rico is not a liar. So now you're calling a person you've never met You've never had any personal business dealings with him or any engagement with him. You're calling them a liar. So what does that make you? That makes you a person that assumes things and casts judgments on little evidence. No one intelligent or no one with emotional intelligence and no one with a high IQ would do that. You can't just say because you're a jealous, insecure loser in a trailer park to which he does live in a trailer park. Guys, 
I'm not going to put the address here, but you can click the link. It will be the first link in this video description. You can look up all of his corporate filings, his Dun & Bradstreet, all of it, and you're going to find this guy lives in a trailer park, but he wants to flag my video for posting the address. But bro, you've marked it as your public business address, as your, as your private business address. It's online. If you wanted to hide it, don't put it online. It's not an invasion of privacy, okay? It, it's there. You just you don't want people to know something, but you put it online. It's like you posted a picture of you with a, with a minor, right? But you don't want people to know that you're with that girl. Okay, you, well, you posted it up, bro. You don't want people to know you live in a trailer park like a bum. Well, bro, it's on your social media. It's on your business website, okay? It's on the... Uh, the, the government, uh, the state website, bro, your trailer park, your double wide trailer park. I think maybe a single wide. Uh, I don't know, but it's a dirt road, bro. So guys, make sure to click the, the link in the description below to see what's going on. And it's not, I didn't write this. Okay. I wrote some of it. There's going to be actually, I think maybe three links. I want you guys to check those out. Okay. Those three links are going to give you the whole spiel of things. All right. So that's pretty much that. Now let's go back into the criteria. Okay. All right. Let's change gear. So on this board here, we have what's called the criteria. This criteria from here to here would be the criteria for the worst credit repair companies. Now to meet this criteria, if a credit repair company has any of these criteria, it doesn't necessarily make them a scam. Scam, the legal term you can find in the Black's Law Dictionary, so in any situation where you're doing research about moi, you want to look in what's called the Black's Law Dictionary. The Black's Law Dictionary is the legal codex for legal terminology. And in business, everything is a legal term. In case you haven't known, you as a consumer need to become acquainted with Black's Law Dictionary to find the proper definitions of these words because in the contracts, uh, or lack thereof, there will be verbiage to which if that contract is not in compliance with called the Credit Repair Organizations Act, then you know it's it's not good. It's not, you know, it doesn't have a clad iron guarantee. All right, that clad iron guarantee and, you know, the law, the Credit Repair Organizations Act, and then also the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and also state and municipalities, they pretty much govern what you can guarantee and what you can't. And we're going to go into that. So, like I said, guys, this is not one of those videos where it's a, quick video that's done recklessly or without any meaning. But I promise you, if you watch this video, you'll be able to clearly understand what is a scam and what is not. Those will be the extremes. And then what is on the bottom barrel of credit repair? And then what is on the premium elite? Elite. And it's funny because they even that word elite, which is not a trademark. I'm never going to trademark a word elite, that a, a word that some people use. This person changed his package to our package. He literally copied our package name amongst other things. This, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And he copies my video. He even copies uh, a board. He got the exact board that I do. And he used the, the blue pen just like I do. No other person in credit repair does that other than myself. There's no other. There, there's a couple, but they're from long ago. So we're going to go into that too, right? So anyway, this criteria. The first criteria is unrealistic promises. For unrealistic promises, there are both direct unrealistic promises to which they'll flat out tell you. You could read the contract. It'll tell you, boom, you can read their marketing. They're telling you that they're a scam. And then there's indirect promises where it takes some higher IQ level. My IQ is you know, in the 130s, so it's actually pretty high. But if you're a 70 level IQ like this idiot in Georgia, probably not going to understand this, which is precisely why how this guy, when he copies stuff, I can break through it because he's already a hundred steps behind me and I'm already a thousand steps ahead of him or a hundred steps, right? I'm so far ahead of him that he wants to nitpick what I got and try to conjure up a lie. Well, you're not going, it's not going to work. It's not mathematical, right? It doesn't make mathematic sense to do that. So it's just wasting your time. So people are going to indirectly 
misrepresent. So indirect, unrealistic promises and then misrepresentation are, are kind of the same thing. All right, and I'll give you an example. If someone has a YouTube channel, like this bald-headed loser bum in a trailer park, if he's posting fake results and claiming that they're done in two weeks, that are done in one week, when the mail system reaches your, dis when you send a mail out, it reaches the, the bureaus and the companies have 30 days to respond. Okay, they're not always going to respond so quickly. So to say it gets deleted in a week or two weeks like he's claiming is a flat out lie. When a person is posting nothing but his cherry picked results of just a few people, that's a misrepresentation. And it's an unrealistic promise because he's only showing you what could happen if you're lucky, because it doesn't happen all the time, it will be considered a direct and indirect unrealistic promises. Because you're only showing part of what's happening. You're not showing all the other stuff. Okay? You're not, he's not showing all the other stuff. I can prove that. Why? Because I actually have a phone call of several of this guy's clients and they didn't see any results. Okay? I'm going to play the recording of this recorded phone call on this video for you guys to listen. So uh, you were working with the company in Georgia? Yeah, I was working with this company from Georgia, this one guy, and um, you know, I was just asking him some questions because it was time for my next round this month. And because things wasn't, he wasn't really doing too good of a job. I mean, he did, to be honest, he did get a BK removed, but he only got like, three accounts removed and 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 he and then a whole bunch of inquiries fell off that fell off due to age they just fell off because it was the two years was up so he pretended like he got all of his accounts off and all of this stuff so i just asked him a simple question i was just asking him is hey what point do you start to file complaints just that in the third and you know, then he like was like telling me I need to learn how to read, go read the website and this, that and the third. So then me and him got into it. So I just told him to cancel. But I remember you and him was into it. He kept saying your company. I was watching those videos. So I want to see what your company can do. I, I you know, just maybe just go with a different company. Okay, got it. Um, yeah. So I can you hear me. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I'm getting another call. Just don't worry. I'll take it later. But yeah, so um, so basically credit repair is illegal in Georgia. They're not allowed to repair credit. No private. He said he, do. Yeah, he said he was sending it to somebody because I guess he said his company in Texas. Yeah, that's still illegal because so here's the thing. You're either working with someone that uh, is claiming that he's sending your personal information to someone that you do not know, which is a red flag. And then, or maybe he's doing it himself, but the act of repairing or even marketing credit repair and receiving tax because the state of Georgia, uh, you're not supposed to collect taxable revenue on illegal prohibited businesses and credit repair is one of them. So that is a, uh, is a, is a, uh, against the law well, I, know right what kind of, I, mean, I decided to give him a chance because I kind of got involved with him before I really saw all of that stuff going on between you and him but that's y'all business got it. but I kind of yeah. thought it was a red flag because he he would always say he was going to leave it alone and not do any more videos and then he kept like going back and doing more videos and I'm like well I, I thought you said you was going to stop and like even the day he caught me like six times and every time me and him was having this exchange uh, he just couldn't stop calling me and texting me back. And I'm like, you were talking about this guy talking they, to customers bad, but you talking to me bad. He said he was going to sell my social security number. And then he tried to say that um, that girl in Vegas, uh, Vargas, was going to be the one. He was like, no, I was talking about Vargas. I'm like, no, your text message said that you was going to sell my social security number when I told you that I wanted to cancel. So you know what you heard and this guy has a tendency to say things but then go back and change them which is very dangerous so he does this a lot with me but again you know you as a customer i'll be more than happy to help happy you to but help you. this situation with him is that uh we all know 
like the type of person that he is and you know this the uh, experience the experience you had with him is no different than a lot of other people um and so um, now you know how he is right so anyway um yeah if you want to work with us um, we'll need to look at your credit report and understand, you know, what's going on there, and give you an actual consultation. And okay. yeah, we're not we're not going to we don't belittle our customers, our customers that pay us. Uh, where our job is to educate you, and if there's a situation where, you know, uh, you don't have the answer for something, we'll be more than happy to explain exactly what this means. Uh, yeah, I just. And- I'll just ask them, I said, thought things would be further along than they are at this point. Unfortunately, we do things the legal way. If you want it done faster, my company is definitely not for you. There is no contract. You can count any time. Also, your payments fail today. Okay, yeah, I was going to get there straight. No. And I said, at some point, a while back, your website said six months. And I was like, laugh out loud. And he said, oh, got to read better. It says six months or less. Um, not you'll be done. LOL. But the thing is, he did say six months because... I printed his old website. I printed his information out like a year ago. And he yeah, said well, that he said that elite program took six months. Now he was telling me like, and this is why I didn't have money on that card today because then the other day when I talked to him, he told me it was going to take up to a year. And I'm like, well, you said six months. So now you're trying to milk me for six more months of payments. The contract was for like $1,400. was like for $1,200. He said that that's what... It would, that should have be the price, you know, on average for most customers. But now you're telling me it's going to be like up to 12 months. And so, you only got like three accounts off in, in five, six months. Man, screw you. Well, if you look at, uh, we've paid attention to this guy's website, which he changes and it's inconsistent. So to understand exactly your agreement with him, you would have to have a contract and you know what you signed with him and you also know what you agreed with him. And um, he is promoting on his business that he's getting deletions done in two weeks and this and that. But he, now he said to you, his average client pays him $1,400. Now, if we do the math, that $1,400 is not paid up front because this is the type of person to say that charging up front is illegal. Especially yeah, you can't person. charge up front. Right, you can't charge up. Well, he said on the contract says most customers are done within like six months, and yeah. he said the fee was like you know. So I'm assuming that hey, when, you know what I mean. But now all of a sudden that we coming on like five months, six months. Now he said, oh, it could take up to a year because it's just how soon the companies want to take off the. But that's not what you said, and your yeah, website that's not said what that. He said in the beginning. No, and, and the that's web, not how he's advertising at all either. How he's right. marketing his business is as if there's some magic being done, and this is how scams market themselves, right? And right, but he want to call website, you. Yeah, he want to call you and Kristen Vargas a scam. Everybody a scam by him, but I knew it was something going on with him when these all these Vargas? accounts wasn't Christian Vargas. Yeah. He, I, that is, Oh, okay, this girl out in uh, Vegas, he he, he bad-mouthed her, too. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I know who that, she's a YouTuber, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he, yeah, he, no. he, he, he said that you and her, y'all gonna sell, y'all sell people social security numbers. Mm, that's not correct. I have, I have a lot of clients, and I have a lot more clients than he has, and I've been in business longer, and in, you know, my state's, that we operate, we're 100% legitimate. Now, this guy you that you have been dealing with, he is a very petty and a very small-minded person, and he's uh, a pathological liar. He he has the capability to say something to you and then change it. You you uh, you saw that right, and to, to threaten you, that's another thing. Um, so yeah, man. So oh, this this thing is more about my problem. Well, it's not really a problem, but, you know, uh, I don't want to get you involved, right? It's not professional. However, um, your experience with him... Uh, yeah, I, not saw, I mean, that's the thing. I saw what was going on between y'all. I saw the videos and what he was saying. And just for him to even 
for even him to even say that, even him, to, even if he, even if he said that Vargas was the one that was going to sell my social life, what kind of stuff is that that you tell somebody? Like you, like it's, it's, it, it's not, it's not professional, and it's not based upon anything, and it's defamation, and it's not fair, and it's not mature. And then he told me he's gonna sue me because I, yeah, he told me he gonna sue me because I, I basically was cussing him out. I just cussed him out because when he told me, like he implied like I'm stupid, like I can't read. I can read, and the thing is, it like you said, if I don't know something, I'm just asking you a question. But I know he full. All he wanted to do was kind of do like that Lexington law thing where he was just going to dispute a little bit at a time, get a few accounts off, just enough to keep me going. And try to keep me on that program for a year. Cause this is the thing. I only got, I got two accounts on Equifax that need to be removed. Now, or now it's three cause a collection just popped up. But he couldn't even get Equifax cleaned in five months. And it's only got two accounts. Okay. And All he right. told me, he, he told me in the beginning, he said like after the fourth round, he go to the better business bureau. But now today he said he make complaints every month. So if you went to the Better Business Bureau, I mean, or the, um, what the, the fuck the, is the best, what, what the fuck is the BBB going to do? Well, he said he went to the other one too, the, uh, Consumer Protection Bureau. So you couldn't go to them and get two accounts off of Aquifax? Well, it, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> the guy is incompetent. So if you were to put me and him in a classroom and to, you know, describe credit repair, he wouldn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But here's the thing, man. You can have the best credit repair expert, and you may not have good results. That's the truth. However, one thing that we won't do is that we won't belittle you, and we won't talk bad about anyone else, and you don't need to ask us what's oh. going on. We'll be the first ones to tell you because we provide. Okay, but that's the thing. It's like every time I ask him something, because in the very beginning, he got upset because he was like, what's your question? I was like, no, I just want to be enlightened. Yeah, you know, I well, just want to know what it's, you're it's doing it's because this is, a, this, this, is a this is a red flag. This is a red flag, too. He told me in the beginning that he didn't use Metro 2 dispute, but he sent me over a copy of the dispute letter that he had. And it had a little bit, it had both, it had Metro 2, and it had consumer law kind of mixed in the letter because I know a little bit about this stuff because I be watching videos and hearing what other people say. So he, he lied in that aspect too. <laughs> All right, so I don't know, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about him. I just, he, he, he just, you know, um, uh, yeah, I just said, well, let me let one of his, let, let me let his, I'll let his, um, yeah, that, that, I'll just let, I'll just come to you and see what you can see if you could probably potentially help me. And I know that yeah. if nobody can guarantee anything, but this guy was telling me he was the best. He was the number one. That's what he was saying. He said he was the number one person. He could get everything removed. No problem. Well, that's what he's that's saying. What he, that's what he believes. But the you thing know. is, like I said, now a BK, my BK, the B, a BK did fall off experience. So I give that to him, and he got two other accounts up, but nothing was removed from TransUnion, and nothing was removed from Equifax. Even if he could have got the two accounts off Equifax, I would have been happy because at least I would be able to be able to go do what I got to do right now for now. But he he have, couldn't. Do you have copies of the disputes that he sent? Yeah, I got everything. Yeah, he sent me all copies besides uh, besides one rail. He didn't send me one for um, I di I didn't get it for like the second round, but I got it for like the first round. Yeah, so I got like three, four rounds of disputes from him that he sent me the letter. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd like to look into that. Well, if you want to work with me, um, so insinuated that I was stupid that I needed to go back and reread all. I need to read properly. That's when he pissed me off. I, and, and even when me and him was arguing and I was yelling and cussing him out, I so never said anything about what my money don't, back. You don't know how to read because you're black? Wow, that's terrible. No, he didn't say because I was black. He well, just said that I needed... Because he's saying that you're getting mad at him because he's white. Count that was only was like a charge over, I guess. So, they, so now I, that's got three accounts. Uh, Experian has like... 
I don't know, eight accounts, and then TransUnion got about 10 or 11 accounts. He, Ooh, he didn't get any. You got a lot. You got a lot. He I didn't... thought it was just a couple. Okay. All right. No, so, no, no. The files, is, the files is mismatched because. No wonder you're pissed. Yeah, because he ain't, in four months, he got three accounts off. He got two charge off off the uh, experience. And he got the BK off. The BK was already off on. Um, Did you know, in my um, in my money back guarantee, it's uh, a, a better money money back guarantee than him. It's 120 days. His is 190. And, 180, or, I think. 180. Yeah. Okay. Well, he changed. It. He changed stuff. I haven't paid attention to it. You know, I'm. I'm yeah. He got the BK also. What if I paid him? That's okay. He can just have that money and 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 have fun. He yeah. sent me a text accusing him of saying that I was yelling at him because he whited and all. I'm like, what? What are your race got? What are you talking about, dummy? I I I never wow. like something is wrong with this guy. Okay. I got um, the whole. Yeah, I got the whole you, chain. Can with you, the whole <laughs> Can you give me that information? I'd love to. I'd love to roast them online. And for doing that, I. Okay, that should tell you by just listening to that one phone call, you'll get a good idea of who this person really is. And I've been telling people this, and people already know. But for those of you that may not, uh, just listen to that again. And that's how he talks. That's how he deals with everybody. And. On his website, on his videos, he portrays himself to be some white knight, to be some, you know, nice, really, uh, just to be some really good-hearted person, but he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, I'm telling you. He's a very psychotic person, and the things that he shows on YouTube is not how he is. Some of the things he shows really how he really is, but he deleted them because he knows that you know, I called him out. Pretty much everything that I called him out on, he like deleted or changed because Let's face it, he can't handle the truth, right? This is a, a very delusional guy, and you could see how condescending he talks to his customers. He um, tells them to read and this and that. He literally takes money from them and then uh, is verbally abusive towards them. This person actually had a legitimate complaint. The guy, as you listened, he didn't remove anything off in many, many months, just removed like three accounts out of the, I think there was like about 20, 20 plus accounts, maybe even 30 accounts calculate two bureaus 11 plus 11 that's about 22 accounts he didn't remove and the guy called to ask for an update and then the guy yelled at him and they uh went back and forth so you can see this guy clearly doesn't have the ability to handle customer service and he doesn't have a assistant like mine most of the time um people reach my assistant they don't even reach uh, reach out to me so people have limited amount of access to me they pay a premium for that added bonus to further prove that this guy's a total fake if you look at his subscriber count it's like 10k and each of the videos that he posts even about our company i don't know if he posts now i haven't really looked but it's clear as day this guy is a total fake and a fraud because his youtube channel gets maybe like 5,000 views 10,000 views per video but there's literally no comments. So if you look at someone's channel, like this one right here, and there's literally no comments or there's comments, but from the same people every year, then that tells you one thing, it's totally fake. So your comment section should be congruent with the amount of views and subscribers you have, especially if you're growing so much. You think that people that are subscribing would at least comment what they think or share. So it's interesting how none of these videos have comments so it's totally fake and another thing is this if their videos are getting 5,000 10,000 views and he's talking about my company which he has how come that traffic is not coming to my channel right you youtube youtube studio can track these metrics youtube can track these message uh these metrics it's not difficult to understand this right you notice and here's a thought look at how many views this video gets and ask yourself, is it getting attention from that channel or is it just organic, right? So that's another thing. That channel is totally fake. They're buying fake views. And there's one time where if you look at as YouTube shorts, they're getting comments from people from different countries. And he was saying that people from India are commenting on his channel. Well, that has nothing to do with me. Perhaps it's because what he's doing, how he gets traffic is by advertising through a third party and interrupting people's Minecraft and then they find out, oh, I didn't even have the intention to search for this business, but it pops up because he's doing 
pay for views. He's paying basically for views because no one wants to watch his content. So he has to actually buy views. It's actually sad. So that's another tip. So pay close attention to that. Don't be fooled by the subscribers he has or the view count. They're totally fake. And that's not my opinion. It's just logic. Look at the comments. There's literally no comment. If they're just showing you cherry pick results, be careful. If you, so this is a fact check. If you ever get excited when you watch a credit repair expert, oh, I'm going to get it done too. Okay, hold yourself. You know it's a red flag. If it's too good to be true, it's a red flag. Now, Pinnacle Credit Repair, we show you all the results that we can show you. You can just see there's a playlist. Guys, make sure to check out my playlist on my channel. I'll leave a link, a video right here in the description below as well. Click that and take the time to look at it and, and watch the results that I have. That way you can see there are clients that get a few things are off and there are clients that got a, a lot more than a few things. You can see stuff pending and not deleted. I show you, there's just so much information there. There's so much transparency. You can't deny it. That's why people are paying me $3,000. And I haven't even posted in a month. I didn't even post a video in like a month. Okay, that should tell you that I'm not, I don't really need to do this YouTube thing. All right, I put my business on pause because it was my decision. I put the YouTube channel on pause because I have control over my business. My business doesn't have control over me. And that was precisely why I joined business to be able to maintain my amazing life and still make others amazing by fixing their stuff, by not being anything like this. When I started my company, I looked at all the stuff that people did not like and I changed it. And that's why Pinnacle is mentioned in you know, badcredit.org, card rates, money.com has our business listed and best company were top ranked. So there you should, there you have it. So unrealistic promises. Okay. They're showing you results that are not going to, that probably not going to happen to you. So just make sure you see that. Look at all their case studies. Okay. Even people that leave me a five-star review, it's not necessarily that we got, it's not necessarily about the negative items that we've removed in like one or two weeks, but it's actually the level of service and the information and guidance and mentorship that we gave them. Because I will tell you, there are some cases uh, where we don't really get the results that you might see other people showing. But my customers still pay me a premium because they like to work with me. I give them that peace of mind and it's the best in the business. No person can guarantee you anything done within a week or two weeks. And that person is definitely doing that on his channel considering he's only showing you that. Now, Charging upfront fees. Now that is illegal. That's against the Fair Credit Organizations Act. That person is actually doing it. The business is right here because they're not doing any work ahead of time. So the credit repair company has to follow this in order to charge. Okay. Upfront, what's considered upfront is written in this right here. You can you guys can look it up. Credit Repair Organizations Act. We don't do that because we charge three days after. It's on our website, it's in our contract. Okay and we do work before. How do we do it? Our artificial intelligence allows us and makes it capable for us to preload, to pre-make your disputes and fill everything out before you join, okay? Or somewhere between that time frame. Whereas a person that's writing letters in the mail, okay, and sending them has to actually act and do that. And if you live in Georgia, you write a, uh, a letter like this guy in his shed right here. That's a picture of a shed. He's writing because he does credit repair in a shed in a trailer park. Yeah, it's true. Look up in the description below, guys. Um, you're actually doing credit repair illegal by putting it in the mail. That act, you're marketing it, you're doing it, and it's 100% illegal. So can't do that. Poor contracts, okay? Poor contracts. Now this recorded phone call will give you some insight on his contract because the guy actually talks about this guy's contracts. And you can look at his website. His websites don't have anything that's transparent on them. So poor contracts. If any credit repair company does not have a written contract, the contract has to be credit repair organizations compliant. Now contracts can look like contracts, but they're actually not contracts because contracts are governed by your state. Okay. Where the jurisdiction, where was the contract written? Okay. If this person is doing credit repair in Georgia and charging, that contract has to be underneath Georgia law, but he doesn't have one. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, he didn't have a business there. Well, actually he does, but he says it's not. So we don't know 
what this guy is about. You got to be careful. We don't know where his business is. We don't know what's going on here. Very confusing. These things you can't come at Pinnacle for because everyone knows. It's on our website. It's in our contract. It's, it's, it's there. It's transparent. Okay. Now, no reputation. That's a big one right here. No reputation. So this company right here and some other companies, they have made statements like, oh, you should look at Pinnacle Credit Repair's BBB. Well, guess what? I could pay the BBB to fix all that. I've never cared about the BBB. The BBB doesn't determine a person's credibility so much. If you look at the reviews in the BBB, it's much different. Our reviews are like a four out of five. We have some complaints, but I can't even log into BBB to address them because you have to understand I had a partner before and the password was changed. I can't go in there. And there are two BBB accounts with Pinnacle Credit Management, Pinnacle Credit Repair. Okay. So that's, that's the reason why I don't go in there. And I really don't care about it. People can leave reviews other places, which they don't. Now you're going to see all the uh, reviews that may, may be shady and may not be accurate. They'll go to BBB, but they won't go to others because BBB doesn't have a filtering mechanism. It's definitely flawed. BBB, you can pay money for, and you could fix things like that. And they give you a rating to try to determine your worth as a business person, but it's not how it is. And it's funny because this person wants to take a stab at our BBB and say we're a F rating, but they don't even have a BBB. You know, why, why is a company talking so much about our business saying BBB this, BBB that? You don't even have a BBB. This company doesn't even have a BBB uh, accreditation. Okay? Because if they did, you want to know what will happen? Yeah. If you're watching this, Mr. You Know Who, I dare you to make a BBB and I dare you to, to make some actual review sites and you're going to watch what happens. You're going to watch what happens because people like that leave me these phone calls, they're going to talk about you and you know your rating is going to go all the way down. That's why he doesn't have review ratings. If you look at Trustpilot, if you look at Best Company, if you look at any credit repair review company, a Google listing, why doesn't this company have it? So they're definitely a scam. He, there's no online reputation about this business. Lack of transparency. Well, you're not showing people the actual results of your business. And on YouTube, you're showing the cherry pick results. That's not transparent. Lack of transparency. You want the credit repair company to show you reviews, a reputation, okay? Your pricing, your contracts to, to, to tell you how they charge. Okay, and to tell you what they can promise, what to, they can guarantee, and it has to be in accordance with CROA. It can't be like that. Okay, to be transparent, you have to follow CROA. Hidden fees, hidden fees. You mean if they have a fee that's presented on their website and then you call them and they change it or it's a higher than they expected? Well, that's a hidden fee. Okay, also how their fee structure. Look at their fee structure and how they collect payment and when they do it. All right. Think about that. That's also not transparent and it's hidden. The customer that called me, this person that called me, I won't mention his name, but I will mention, uh, I'll show you guys the, the phone call, the recorded phone call. Um, he complained about hidden fees. This guy overcharged him and didn't do any work. Unsuccessful dispute efforts. Well, the person that called me over the recorded call didn't see success in the dispute process. So, if they have no reputation, it's probably because they don't have success disputing items. They can't show you any results. And if they're showing you only the good results, they're not showing you all the other results, which I guarantee you are not that good. Okay. Especially if you're disputing by mail. All right. And especially if you have the low level IQ as this person, then I guarantee you're not getting results as good as ours. That just doesn't make any mathematical sense right there. Okay. That's probably why they have no reputation because the unsuccessful dispute letters that they send and they're not really getting success. So they don't want to show you the majority. They only show you the good things. So our reviews are in the thousands. Okay. You can see on my channel, we have hundreds of videos and those hundreds of videos, we have multiple clients per video. 
I log into the account and I show you guys hands on. There's nothing to hide, right? There's no reason to hide. It's nothing, nothing I post online is going to harm my business. Maybe some jerk off will try to slander my name, but that doesn't hurt my business. It only makes you look bad. It only markets my business. People get to see it. It's like you're a turd, but then you're showing them gold. All right. You're, and then you're, you're the piece of shit that's showing them the gold. They're going to go that way. Or maybe they don't have enough money. That's probably why they chose your broke ass in the first place. Right. People pay me a premium to work with me because what you pay for, you get in life. If you want a six pack abs, if you want a body like this, which this guy clearly does not have, you have to put in the work. There's no cheat code. This is not cheap. A six pack, only 4% of the population has a six pack. 